Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anton, and I will lead today's webinar about new features of Smart PTT software implemented in 8.1 version. In case of someone is unfamiliar with our software, I will tell you shortly about its general features. Smart PTT comes in two variants. Smart PTT Basic is a solution for small local radio networks where a control station is used to dispatch the system. Smart PTT Enterprise allows dispatch and control over complex Motorola Mototurbo networks such as IP Site Connect, Capacity Plus, Linked Capacity Plus, Connect Plus, and so on. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and log the flow of data and voice in radio network request location of subscribers, and monitor the state of repeaters. Smart PTT connects to IP Site Connect directly via IP. Capacity Plus and Link Capacity Plus networks can be monitored and logged via IP connection, but to have ability to send data into network and make calls, control stations are needed. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools, such as web client and file transfer software, which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBXs and gives subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. That's all general functional Smart PTT software. Let's proceed to new features implemented. New features include the following. Support of new Motorola interface Mototurbo network application interface, which allows direct IP connection to Capacity Plus and Link Capacity Plus without need of control stations. Bridging between radio servers, allowing further expansion of Smart PTT dispatch system. Support of another new feature from Motorola, job ticketing. Control station channel selector, which is a feature of convenience for custom console users. New report type, list of online subscribers, sound control for individual groups, system information control window, advanced event messages settings, subscriber speed control via GPS, trial license generation on first install. That is it. Now I will proceed with this list one by one, revealing the features a bit more. And first feature to reveal is MNAI support. MNAI support allows Smart PTT software to receive and send data to and from MNAI networks by means of IP protocol. Currently, Smart PTT can dispatch all ARS, GPS, telemetry and text messages in IP Site Connect, Capacity Plus and Lint Capacity Plus network topologies. Following upgrades also needed for your hardware. Voice calls support is planned for further releases and is not supported now. Next feature will be bridging between radio servers. Lately, Smart PTT had ability to bridge IP Site Connect and Capacity Plus networks. Example of bridging is given. Suppose uh, there are two independent IP Site Connect networks connected to one radio server. If we will make bridge between them, this would mean if subscriber from one IP Site Connect calls bridged group, not only local subscribers will respond, but subscribers from bridged networks that belong to the same group will respond too. Radio server bridging allows us to connect another independent radio server to existing system and extend it this way. So, when bridged group is called, all stations system-wide belonging to this group will respond. Currently, Radio server bridging gives opportunity to bridge all calls, private calls, group calls, registration data, text messages, and dispatcher calls, including dispatcher to dispatcher connection. Bridging settings in dispatcher software left transparent. There is no problem in connecting another Smart PTT radio server to the network if both radio servers are correctly configured. As for now, only bridging of IP Site Connect networks between radio servers is available. For further releases, another topologies are planned to be available for bridging. 
First priority will be MNAI bridging. Next feature to describe is job ticketing. Job ticketing support allows Smart PTT to fully implement functionals that has been added to MotoTurbo networks by Motorola lately. Using new interface job tickets, you can create, assign, watch progress, and delete tickets. Also, it's possible to restart repetitive task by selecting it and clicking restart button. Saving time with no need to create this ticket again. Tickets give more fluent and visual control over performance of tasks handled by subscribers of radio network. Also, you can filter tickets by assignee, status, date of creation, and date of update. This will allow you to organize and find needed tickets quickly. After pressing Add Ticket button, user will be prompted to enter name of task, short description, and assign the task to subscriber. Subscribers are added on drag and drop basis, and only currently online subscribers can be assigned to handle the task. Upon receiving order, subscriber will see message, as shown on the screenshot, and dispatcher will see job ticket created. Subscriber can update status of job ticket by sending specially made replies to show the progress on the task. Accepted, in progress, pending, complete. Statuses are customizable via CPS. Smart PTT Dispatcher will update this information upon receiving such messages. Summarizing everything, Smart PTT fully supports job ticketing feature of Motorola. Let's proceed to next feature, Channel Selector. Channel Selector is a feature of Smart PTT Custom Consoles interface which allows usage of touch screens consoles for dispatchers. Channel Selector gives dispatchers the ability to select with one touch which channel control station will reside on and allows more fluent and easy control over control station channels. Channel Selector appear, appears like a switch on console where orange blob is showing currently active channel. Each channel switch is independent and console can be organized using panels to represent visually which subscribers can be accessed using these channels. Next internal Smart PTT feature is online report. Online subscribers report will show all currently online subscribers in the Microsoft Excel format list. In the list IDs and corresponding subscribers' names assigned to them are listed. Dispatcher can choose a range of IDs to form a report from. This is self-describing feature. Another internal upgrade, group sound control. Now it's possible to control muting of groups individually. For any group on any slot that was set up in the settings of radio server, it is possible to mute sound while still recording logs of all calls on both dispatcher and radio server. This option is available through either console, uh, sound, sound panel sorry, or online subscribers list. Muted groups will appear on online subscribers list with small red crossed circle at the bottom right to represent muted status visually so dispatcher would not forget about muted groups. Let's proceed with system information window. System information window lists information considering state of databases and storages and integral load on the network. Here user can select the source of information to retrieve. Amount of event happened of, uh, for a lifetime of dispatcher or radio server listed here. And in the lower part of the window there is state of databases and audio storage folder. User can clearly see the limits for databases, get exact sizes of them, and make decisions of necessity of backing up databases or audio file storage folder. Further, I will tell you about two feature updates considering events and notifications. First one, advanced notification message editing. Notification messages are sent to subscribers when event happens. 
New functionality allows us to select specific fields that will be included in notification message, such as subscriber name and ID, date and time of event, location of subscriber who originated the event if event is handled on some subscriber status change, type of event, and custom text. For example, if fire alarm, fire alarm happens from telemetry event, we will surely need date and time of this event, type of event, and some custom text to describe what has happened. But when emergency is started by subscriber, we need subscriber name and location of subscriber to see who originated the event and where it happened. This message will be sent to every preset subscriber in the field or also to email if you want to, to have email notification. Second update of event handling is GPS speed control rule. This new rule allows dispatcher to set control of subscriber speed over ground. Dispatcher will have notification every time when subscriber exceeds speed limit. Notification message can be sent as well. Speed limit can be set in meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, and nautical miles per hour, thus giving flexible setting for different types of vehicle and subscribers. And the last but not least feature is trial licenses. Trial license eliminates the need of requesting and downloading new demo license for first installation of Smart PTT software. Trial license is generated automatically when Smart PTT is installing on new system for first time. Trial license will last for 60 days from generation date and is the same as demo license. If Smart PTT was installed previously on this very system, installation will find and use the license file that was used previously even if this license is closer to expiration than trial or already had expired. This prevents user from using multiple reinstallations of Smart PTT to use trial forever. So, this covers all new features of Smart PTT release 8.1. This webinar is recorded and will be available for download from our website at Dealer Zone page. Smart PTT Dealer Zone page is accessible with login and password from our website. If you have no login pass pair, you can request it from us by email on info at smartptt.com. Stay tuned and join our upcoming webinar on general functionality of Smart PTT in June 2013. Also on main page in the bottom left corner. I mean main page, or main page of our website. You can download our case study portfolio in PDF format to get examples of Smart PTT integration for various businesses and industries. Visit our website smartptt.com for more information about Elcom Plus and our software. And join us on Facebook. Any questions regarding software you can write as an email on address info at smartptt.com. Thus, this webinar ends. If you have any questions, you can ask me right now.